Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not going to hold you very long this morning. Polly, would you take my trash out? I know we got dinner this morning. I know we got guests. Amen. Just give all of our first time uh, visitors a hand clap this morning, will you? <laughs> Praise God. If you're a first time visitor here at Life Changers Church, we hope that you'll be a second time visitor. Amen. And a third time and a fourth time. Praise God. And just become. Uh, part of our family. If you have your Bibles, I want you, if you would, to open with me this morning to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. When you get Genesis 22, just go down to verse number 15 and then just stand to your feet for the reading and the reverence of the Word of God, please. Hallelujah. We uh, we believe in what God is doing. Sometimes Satan uses all that disappointment to destroy your faith. But God will use the disappointment to restore your faith. Listen. Satan will use disappointment to destroy your faith. But the disappointment did not come because God didn't believe that you couldn't make it. But it came because God wanted to restore. See, in every one of us, you have to understand this, in every one of our lives, there are things that has to be restored. Some of you haven't lived long enough to understand that, and some of you have some stuff that you know that only God can restore. But when God begins to speak to your heart, when God begins to speak to your life, God always speaks concerning your future. Listen to me. Listen to this. Everybody say, I'm listening. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, man, you look good in church. Listen, when you're hearing things of your past, that ain't God. Listen to me. When you're hearing things of your past, that is not God. God is speaking ahead of you, not behind you. Let me say this again. God is speaking ahead of you and not behind you. So I'm not saying that you don't have things in your past that are not good because there are some really good things and you can, but when you're focusing on, on things that has hurt you or tore you down or, or people have said about you or stuff in your life, that ain't God. God is speaking ahead of you. He goes in front of you. God sees things that you don't see. Let me say this again before I read my scripture. God speaks, okay? But more than anything, it's the Holy Spirit speaking in you. Now, you will at times know when God spoke because everything in your life will shake. People come all the time and they say, oh, man, God spoke to me today. God spoke. God didn't speak to you. That was the Holy Spirit. That's his job. His job is to talk to you. But I guarantee you when God speaks, everything comes to a halt. Amen. I'm going to preach this morning. Is that all right? When God speaks, everything stops. He gets your attention. Let's go to Genesis chapter 22, verse number 15. Are you there? And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not we withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee, thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Listen to this. Let me read this again. Verse number 17. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed. I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. Get this, get this. And thy seed shall possess the gate 
of his enemies. Whew. And thy seed shall be, uh, thy seed shall, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Let's go to Psalm 62 and 11 real quick. If, if, if you can't find it, it's right here on the screen. Psalm 62 and 11. Uh, King David said, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that the power belongeth unto God. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we come into this place this morning and we thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you're going to do amazing things here. And we thank you, Lord, that your word has been cast. And, Lord, that all those are in the sound of my voice this morning, Heavenly Father, Lord, that they hear you. They hear what you are saying. Heavenly Father, Lord, they be reminded of your voice. And, Father, you begin to move right now. God, lift burdens. Heavenly Father, Lord, and touch lives. Heal minds in this place. Restore in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. Give me about 20 minutes in here this morning. We're going to uh, talk about a few things, and I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to lay out a few things here this morning. One thing I want to talk about is when God begins to speak. He speaks in ways that are completely different than anybody else. Because God speaks in ways, not only is the way that God speaks, but he, he, he comes. And when he talks, sometimes there are things in our life that isn't lined up. Anybody have anything in their life that isn't lined up? All right, praise God. Well, we're in the house of God. I got several things that I need to line up with the vision. And God begins to speak on those places because it's my future. And sometimes it's tough and sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's to the place where I get attached to different things or different sceneries or different places or I get used to the way that it already is. Anybody ever get used to something? Now we can all say, man, we need to change. But when it comes down to change, okay, we want to change the things that, that we want to be different for our benefit. But there's a lot of times we don't want to change the things that wants to be a benefit to somebody else. See, if we are the epistle, okay, if we are the epistles of God, and that word epistles means letters, if we become the letters of God, there are things in our life that we will have to change for the benefit of somebody else. And those are the rough areas. Because we can't see them. So God begins to speak. So God tells Abraham, this is a story real short. God tells the Abraham, he says, Abraham, he said, I want you to get out of your town. I want you to get away from your mama and your daddy. And I want you to get away from everybody in there because I am going to do something to you that's going to be a benefit to everybody else. I want you to walk in something and become something that's going to be a benefit. And so Abraham said, okay. And so he got up. But Abraham made several mistakes. He took his father with him. He took Lot with him. God didn't tell him to do that. God said, I want you to separate you and your wife because I'm going to do something inside of you. But in spite of him still not obeying God, God still worked with Abraham. Ain't you so glad that God still works with you? There are things that God told me to do, and I didn't do them things. And, you know, God didn't just, just, just come up and just kick me out or nothing like that. But there was a place in my life in a void that I knew that I needed to, Lord, what's wrong? I don't understand. I'm praying, and I don't, I, I, I don't have my prayers answered. I, I'm seeking you, but I don't feel this, this joy like I used to. Lord, what is going on? And then it comes back, and God begins to speak and said, this is where you got out of alignment. See, there's a lot of things that I stayed in line with but there's a lot of things that I got out of alignment with. And so now Abraham is up to the point now that, uh, that he's got his promised child, which is Isaac. And so God says, now I want you to take that thing that I've given you, and I want you to give it back to me. This is where Abraham is really good because, because he obeyed God. Listen, God speaks, and then God speaks, and then God speaks. But somebody has said, the, the Jewish customs like his, said that when God speaks twice, it's a sign of covenant. 
And so the Bible says here in this passage of Scripture that Abraham obeyed God. When God spoke, Abraham obeyed. I need to tell somebody this this morning. In those times that God has spoken to you, and when he's spoken to you and you have heard it and you obeyed it, but then it seems like that all hell is broke loose. Has anybody ever been there? Well, Lord, I don't know why I would do this. If you would tell me to do this and I would do this, it seems like that the devils have come out everywhere. Here's the thing is you, ain't, you, you, you haven't stayed long enough to listen to God speak the second time. I'm so thankful that the Bible said Jesus was the second Adam. Whew, ain't you so glad that the second Adam showed up? And so here's this point that God speaks and he begins to tell us and we begin to do it out of obedience. And all of a sudden the enemy comes and he shows up because he knows what God is about to do but we don't know what God's going to do. And so now all of the disappointment comes and all of the things begin to come in our life. And what we do is we see all the disappointment and the only thing that the enemy reminds us of is that well God told you to do this but if God is really in it then why isn't it smooth. Let me tell somebody right now, when you're serving God, there's going to be a lot of areas in your life that is not smooth. There's going to be a lot of places in your life that you're going to have the position or the place to second guess. And second guessing sometimes is not where it's at. Okay, everybody say I love the preacher. When I go shopping with my wife, <laughs> And she comes up and she puts on a pair of shoes and she says, do you like these? And I say, yeah, I do. Nah, I don't know. <laughs> so she takes the shoes off 35 minutes later and 25 shoes later. <laughs> sometimes she goes back to the first one that she picked. And that's the time sometimes that we have to understand sometimes we're very good about seeing who we are the first time, but we like to second guess. And sometimes God speaks in our life in those places, and we are too busy second guessing because we didn't think that it felt right, or it didn't look right, or it didn't seem right, or nobody else got involved and liked it too. See, we are very uh, 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 people who are uh, in the social media world if we post something on Facebook and we only got three likes this week and last week we got 33 likes, then everybody must be mad at us. And it's all about who likes what we do. This is a world that has been made up around us. And so now we get too comfortable in what everybody else thinks. But God's not thinking like everybody else. He's thinking ahead. He's thinking in places that we wouldn't even begin to think. But God knows the future. When you were born, everything about you was wrapped up in you. God started you and finished you at the same time. And now he's commissioned an angel to come down beside you and walk along with you and to guide you and to lead you because he knows your expected end and he knows what is about to happen. Can I preach in here in this morning? He knows what's about to happen in your life. And here's what we do is we get confused with the disappointment. Abraham is really good about obeying. And Abraham stayed with it. And the Bible said that God said, I want you to take Isaac, your only son. Listen to what he said, your only son. Well, he's got two sons. No, God said your only. Listen to how God is putting this. Your only son. Take Isaac, your only son. And take him to the mountain to sacrifice. Don't take anything with you. Take him. Isaac is a grown man. At this time, Isaac is a grown man. He has watched Abraham go to the mountain on many occasions and sacrifice and worship the Lord. And Abraham starts walking off, and he tells Isaac, come with me. Isaac said, Daddy, where's the sacrifice? This is what Abraham says. God will provide. God will provide. Look at your neighbor and say, won't he do it? Look at your other neighbor and say, won't he do it? We just have to trust that he'll do it. I don't know who's over there, brother, but... <laughs> won't he just, just, just look at your neighbor again and say won't he do it 
God spoke the first time and Abraham obeyed. God, God watches Abraham. Abraham, he gets up to the mountain and he prepares the, the, the altar. He lays his boy down on the altar. He straps him up on that altar and he takes the knife and he's ready to go. And the Bible said, the scripture I just read to you, and the angel called from heaven the second time. See, the first time up above it, God says, Abraham, stop. Abraham's good about obeying, and he stops. See, here's the thing. is In God speaking, sometimes we don't last long enough to wait till he speaks the second time because the first time he's speaking because it was obedience, but the second time he's going to command the blessing. I know y'all's thinking about the turkey, but y'all hang on with me. Listen, the first time when he's talking, it's about the obedience. But if you hang in there long enough, he'll speak again. And when he speaks again, he's going to tell you who you are. He's going to tell you that he's going to multiply you. He's going to tell you that he's going to bless you. He's going to tell you that everything in you was designed to this point. People get saved, they come in church, and they backslide because God spoke the first time. He said, come on, and they came. But when trouble came, they got disappointed, and they left. They didn't hang around long enough to hear God speak the blessing I'm about to blow up I need to tell somebody hang on God's about to speak blessing God's about to speak blessing see the Bible said and the angel came and called out from heaven the second time and that's when he commanded the blessing was the second time I am so glad that when God begins to speak, he shakes everything. Now, there's times when I get up and I hear the Holy Spirit talk me, talk me, talk to me, and he guides me, and he tells me, and he pushes me in different places. But I want you to know right now, there are times when God speaks, and when he speaks, it shakes everything. I remember in 1999, this was about a uh, 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 October of 1999 in Atoka, Oklahoma working. I was the uh, 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 associate manager for Walmart and there in Atoka, Oklahoma I, I, I was on the receiving team and so we would take all the trucks and it was Christmas time and they was bringing the trucks and they was loading them up and we was in the back of this truck and God spoke to me and this is what he said. He said, I want you to quit your job. And I just kept walking. I said, get thee behind me, Satan. In the name of Jesus. But I noticed that there was a difference because when God spoke, and then I stopped for just a minute uh, because that voice just shook everything. Uh, and tears began to well up in me. Uh, and things began to shake in me. Uh, and I knew uh, this is God. Uh, God uh, is talking at this moment. Uh, there are times in your life where the Holy Spirit uh, will step out of the way and say, huh, I ain't messing with this one. Uh, we're going to let God do this one. Uh, and so God began to speak uh, because many times the Holy Holy Spirit was leading me uh, and people was telling me things uh, but God said uh, I want you to quit your job uh, and this is what I said uh, I said what do you want me to do when I quit my job and he said preach he didn't show me my future he didn't show me that one day I'd be in Pittsburgh Kansas with the best church in the world he just said preach Almost 25 years ago, I'm hearing God, and it shook me to my core. I got back over there, and I remember it was the uh, Sam's Cole. That, that's when they had all the Sam's Cole, and they had the big pallets. And I got back over there, and, and I, I scooted that pallet away from that truck, and it was lunchtime, and I told everybody, go on to lunch. I squeezed in between that pallet and the back of that truck, and I sat down, and I said, God, if you're telling me to do this, I am going to obey you. I'm going to do exactly what you told me to do and I said I will do it I give it all over to God I knew he wanted me to do it the power of the Holy Ghost felt in the back of that truck the Holy Ghost came and I started speaking in tongues and I got carried away and a 15 minute break went to 25 minutes and I'm having church in the back of that Walmart truck and so finally when I come to I looked up and every one of my workers was standing in that truck some of them was hiding and they 
at that. Some of them said, I didn't know you was French. Praise God. I said, I didn't either. Glory to God. But the Holy Ghost began to move. And it shook some things up. And from that moment, I stepped out in obedience. And I want you to know that I've had to fight devils that I didn't know I'd have to fight. I had to fight generational devils. I had to fight devils that my daddy couldn't defeat. I had to fight devils that my grandpa couldn't defeat. Come on, somebody. God didn't tell me the disappointment. He said, obey. My God, he said, obey. But when you begin to obey, God pours out blessings upon your life. Amen. It's in 1999, the second time God spoke to me. Listen to me. This is a very true statement. It was in 2007 in my front room in Sulphur, Oklahoma. God spoke to me and he said, I want you to go to Pittsburgh, Kansas. 2007. I didn't make it here to 2013. But 2007. I want you to go to Pittsburgh, Kansas. Listen. When God spoke the second time, I knew that, that God was rearranging and putting some things. I'm trying to tell every one of you here this morning. I'm trying to tell you, hang on to what God is speaking. Now, there's been very few times that I knew that God spoke. All the rest of the times, I've been led by the Holy Spirit. Every one of you have been led by the Holy Spirit. But I guarantee you, I'm waking some of you up right now this morning. You're thinking about it. You're thinking, okay, okay, God, that's, that's why you said that. That's why things begin to change. When that was spoken to my life, that's why things begin to change. I need to tell somebody, whatever God's telling you to, my God, somebody hear me. Whatever God's telling you to do it, this moment. I need you to obey and get ready for the second time it's a blessing. God's pouring out blessing upon your life and some of you's already heard God he's going to speak for the second time and multiply he's going to multiply you and bless you and move you. Look at your neighbor and say God's going to move me. Look to your other neighbor and say God's going to move me. God's getting ready. God's getting ready. Somebody says, well, I thought God was already ready. No, he's getting ready. Listen, he's ready in his time, but he's getting ready on our time. See, his time is called eternity. Okay, see, 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 see. He's going to speak to us in, in, in Kainos time. Okay, because we are now. Kainos is, is, is from the word chronometer, and chronometer means to measure time. So he's going to speak to us in a Kainos time, which is us, to measure time. But God is in Kairos time, not chaos, but Kairos, which is called eternity. And so he's where, glory to God, he, he's where everything else needs to be. But God speaks to us uh, to get us to his level. Uh, and sometimes it takes a little longer for others uh, than it does some, uh, for others. Uh, and sometimes we move a little faster. Uh, and sometimes we move a little slower. Uh, but God still uh, has got his time for us. Uh, and I want you to know right now that the Bible says uh, that all things work together for the good. So every place in your life that seems choppy and crazy and messed up, God's working for the good. <clears throat> Some says, well, I don't know why this didn't happen 15 years ago. And God says, because you wasn't ready 15 years ago. Well, I could have missed all of this trouble 15 years ago. And God said, but look at all the other people who would have missed out seeing you make it. Because you didn't die in the trouble 15 years ago, you made it. Look at all the people that were surrounded by your life that watched you because when you come out, they come out. You know why? Because they was watching you. Ain't you so glad that those people that are connected to your destiny uh, that are watching you, uh, those people in your life uh, that are moved upon your life, uh, and I want you to know right now, Abraham, uh, when you come off of this mountain, uh, it's going to be different than any other mountain that you come off of uh, because this one's going to change everything. Uh, this is where uh, God doesn't add to you, but he multiplies to you. Come on, somebody. Uh, he takes the multiplication uh, and he puts in your life. This is where God begins to move uh, on the level that only only heaven can move. 
This is that place where God has designed just for you. Listen. Listen, y'all going to think I'm crazy, but listen. I'm coming to a close. <laughs> Pastor Anna, come to the piano. I just need to get this out. I just need to plug this in. I got a long time to preach this stuff. But I need to plug this in because I need somebody to hear me this morning. I need somebody just to slow down just for a minute and hear me this morning. You may think that you're here because you got invited. But God has already planned your day out. And here's what God is going to do. Those things that God has spoken. Many people in here, listen to me. God has spoken things in your life. God wants to speak. God wants to speak to some people in here for the second time. Just bow your heads just for a minute. Nobody looking around. Bow your heads, close your eyes.